In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. As we gather together today to celebrate the life of our beloved brother, Robert Blum, let us express our faith and our hope in the words of Jesus, who promised eternal life for those who believe. And so let us entrust our beloved Robert unto the merciful and loving hands of our Heavenly Father. Let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Robert, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But the just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the hoary crown for men, and an unsullied life the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right, and the world of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career. For his soul was pleasing to the Lord, therefore he sped him out of the midst of wickedness. But the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into love. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give a gift from the spring of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If they were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a moment. Please allow me first to express on behalf of Resurrection Community my condolences to the family of our beloved brother Robert, especially to his brothers Michael and Patrick and uh, all the rest of the family, um, his cousin, Barbara Ann, and Uncle Robert Voss, uh, the, the, um, the nephews and nieces that uh, he left behind. It's never easy to, to be saying goodbye to somebody who's been a great part of your lives all those uh, 63 years that he spent with you. Because um, just thinking that, you know, from now on, um, he won't be around the way he used to be, and all the, all the ways, beautiful ways of him, the way he shared himself with everyone, maybe his laughter, and all those wonderful moments that he spent with you are gone. And yet, one of the many blessings of being a people of faith, of being Christians, is that we believe that although Robert has gone from our midst, he has just gone ahead of us and in fact, he just went home to our Heavenly Father. This is one way of clearly defining we, uh, well, people as Christians, um, that we are a people of hope, of an eternal hope. And we believe that there will be one day that we can look forward to when we will be together again in God's kingdom. We will be seeing him again and we will be with him again. And somehow that faith helps us to cope with that, uh, this sense of loss and somehow makes us bravely accept this reality of death as part of the big picture that God has prepared for all of us. If it is a consolation, we know that Robert lived his faith, and did his best to uh, profess that faith by the things that he did while he was, he was alive. And uh, I had the opportunity to go and see him in the hospital. I'm glad that the, uh, the family and friends uh, called us and informed us about him, and so I was able to go and uh, give him the sacraments. And uh, in our faith, that is very special, that is very important, that he received the sacraments to prepare him for his eventual passing from here beyond. The Lord Jesus spoke to us today. He said, you have faith in God, 
have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. I believe we as Christians must hold on to those words of Jesus because those are very consoling words and very clear promises from Jesus that he is going to prepare a place for us. Why? Because he wants us to be with him. And he says, when your place is ready, I will call you so that where I am, you also may be. That is the great plan. That we who have been entrusted by the Father to him will not be lost, but will be taken from here to himself so that we will share in the glory of the resurrection. That is the very essential part of our faith. We believe in eternity. Jesus proved it. It is true. How did he prove it? He died. He died on the cross. He suffered for us. But then he did not remain dead in the tomb. On the third day, he rose again and showed to us that he won victory over death so that we also eventually may share in that victory, that we also may resurrect, come back to life for all eternity with him. And so we thank the Lord for, for many things, especially for that assurance that death is not the end of everything for us. In fact, death is just the beginning. We thank God for all the blessings he has bestowed upon Robert in this life. Yes, 63 years probably would, we would say is not very long. But as we heard in the first reading, what is a true measure of a great life? Is it the number of years? No, it says. It's about the wisdom. It's about uh, an well-integrated life of a person that counts more than the length of years in this life. We thank God because for Robert, life was a gift that must be celebrated. So we thank God for the gift of life, all those three years that he, he experienced and enjoyed with you, with his friends. He acknowledged that life itself is a great gift from God must not be wasted away. So he used his life, every talent he received, and every moment that he had, you know, the best way he could. I learned that he was a very caring person. He had that attitude of, of seeing the need around. And we, he's, when he sees a person who is in need, he would always lend a helping hand. To him, even those people on the street corners, he didn't mind. He didn't have to ask, you know, why, why are you here? He just saw a need, and then he responded to that need by helping those who needed help. He enjoyed all the gifts God has given him. Uh, his his good education and. Um, of uh, the many uh, hobbies that uh, he did. Um, I, I gathered that he did some uh, trips, guiding whitewater trips in New Mexico. I had to research that because I didn't know what whitewater was. So if, I'm, if I got it right, it's, it's about the rapids, the rivers, like rafting or maybe kayaking. That's exciting. Must be, yeah, and that needs a lot of, you know, uh, athleticism and agility. Uh, and uh, he enjoyed his profession as an accountant. And um, 
operated his own accounting business. Um, of course, he loved sports and he loved uh, going to Chicago Cubs games and uh, also the Arizona Coyotes. You are blessed to have had the opportunity to experience being with him in this life. But now that Robert has gone ahead of us, we can all the more appreciate what our faith tells us. God is good. God has been so good to us, having blessed us with Robert and with our families and our friends and our loved ones. But most of all, because he sent his only begotten son who showed us the way. The apostle asked him, where is the way? And Jesus says, I am the way. Through him, through Jesus, we are assured that although we must leave this world in death, through death, we will come to the newness of life in Jesus. Because by his dying, he destroyed death. And by his rising, he restored life as we professed in the old form of the Mass. Our faith in eternal life helps us to understand that Robert was born and reborn. And he will enjoy the blissful life that Jesus promised to those who trusted him. And so today and every day, we continue praying for Robert. And we continue trusting in the mercy of God because we know that God desires to find all of us rejoicing and sharing in the endless joy that salvation brings to us. We just need to hold on and keep the faith in our hearts as we continue to travel through this life and continue to live the word of God until he calls us and gathers us all in the Father's house. Again, our condolences. Please rise. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ's Son from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Robert, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted to the company of saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised upon the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Robert, that he may be consoled. in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends and all those who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again and that may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship the faith, then we be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our beloved brother Robert and all who have died. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Robert, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though by our own fault we perish, yet by your compassion and by your grace, when seized by death according to our sins, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory and with him called back into life. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world For by your cross and resurrection You have set us free You have set us free Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished with the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance which you elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, Edward his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Robert, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there. We hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, it's sacred. Sins of the Lord. Have mercy 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. For communion, those who are Catholics and are ready for communion, you may come forward to receive communion. Those who are not ready or those who are not Catholics, if you want to come forward, you may do so. Please cross yourself this way so that we will know and we will say a prayer for you.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant us strengthened by it. Our brother Robert may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Trusting in God, we pray together for Robert, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. Although we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another with our faith in Jesus Christ.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Robert in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, Robert, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Amen. After the final blessing, um, you're requested to stay for a little bit for some eulogies. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, all the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We now go in peace. We are going to see the King soon and very soon. We are going to see the King soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. Everyone could please be seated. Michael Blum. First of all, thank you all for attending, especially those who traveled far to be here. And thank you, Father, for attending to my brother in the hospital. <clears throat> I know it was a great relief to him to have you there. <clears throat> you know, it's ironic that the heart failure that killed Robert, who we affectionately called Bear, was uh, because it was, Bear had the biggest heart that I knew and probably you knew. Um, there was no more empathetic person than our bear. <clears throat> he cared deeply about others and the community he lived in. He was politically active, volunteering not only his money, but also his time because he thought the system was rigged <clears throat> for the wealthy. He envisioned a better world, especially for those who had little. I often saw him go out of his way to give money to people on the street who needed it more than he did. No one was more generous or kind-hearted than our bear. He practiced his Catholic faith in a very real way 
every day, not just on Sundays. If you were his acquaintance, you were Bear's friend. If you were his friend, you were his friend always. And if he didn't know you, he'd give you money. He was always willing to help out the needy and the less fortunate. People down on their luck could count on his contributions on street corners, on park benches, and in other places. <clears throat> My brother was born on August 27, 1958, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, a day I remember well, although I wasn't there at his birth. For our parents had shuffled off my brother Pat and I to Chicago to be with our grandmother in anticipation of my mother's fondest hope, a baby girl. After all the trials that Pat and I had put her and, and Charlie Blum through, it was understandable. <clears throat> I was eight at the time, Pat was almost six. But the news on the phone that day was unexpected. The planned Margaret Mary turned out to be a boy. So my father asked me what to name him. I had it canned already. Robert Stephen, I said. And we called him Robin after a then famous Hall of Fame pitcher. That was his nickname when he lived in Grand Rapids. Friends there still call him Robert to this day. His early summers were spent at an idyllic place on Port Sheldon on the shores of Lake Michigan, mostly with his cousin, Barbara Ann, his guardian angel, who arranged for this service today. He got into all sorts of trouble. Um, he once helped my brother and me, and Mark Wilson reminded me last night that he was involved as well. Um, we uh, buried Barbara up to her neck in sand and then we left. That would be sexual harassment, I'm sure, today, but we thought it was all in good fun. Barbara might feel otherwise. After we moved to Pittsburgh when he was seven years old, he lost his first nickname. Instead, he inquired, after some time, the name most of you know him by, the bear, a name he tolerated but never fully embraced. He attended high school in Pittsburgh where he lost a promising football career due to bad knees. He then graduated from Penn State in 1980 and became a proud Nittany Lion for his life. After graduation, his father said he proceeded to become a, a river rafting guide in New Mexico for several years before migrating to Phoenix, where he stayed till the end. <clears throat> He subsequently sold artistic rugs, worked as an accountant for both Honeywell and for Arizona State, and then he sold internet bundles for Quest. Lately, he operated his own accounting service with several clients, especially his good friend Don Cluett. But Bear was never principally about work. He was mostly about people, his friends and family, you all. Along with his cousin Barbara, he was the linchpin of our family, correcting, connecting people across generations. He recently traveled to Michigan to celebrate my Uncle Bob's 96th birthday. Some of you were there. Bear fed my, comes, my cubs addiction by holding spring training tickets for over a quarter of a century here in the valley. Not because he loved the Cubs, although he did ten, attend games with me and my children and their friends at Wrigley Field, um, but because it was our time together every spring. We got to hundreds of spring training games together over the years. For 35 years, he would pick me up at Sky Harbor during my spring break on what was always the best day of the year. I treasure those memories now. He was a big fan of my son's very accomplished high school baseball career, closely following his spring training tournaments, which also were here. He once recovered a ball from a shutout win that my son threw that I still have in my office at home. He once gave a spirited pep talk to my son's team that inspired them to win a spring training tournament not far from here. Later. He brought my father and his favorite uncle, Bob, to my son's Little League championship games, and they won all the games 
that he attended. He dearly loved a cabin I had for several years on the Metolius River in Oregon in the 80s and 90s, where he spent enough time there that he wanted to buy a home. I think, I rem I think it reminded him of his Port Sheldon youth. We rafted many rivers together in Oregon, in Washington, in Utah, and in Arizona. We skied together some, to some too. Bear, it will not surprise you to know, was not a great skier, but he learned how to fall. We saw baseball games together up and down the West Coast and in Chicago and Pittsburgh as well. He took our father once to a Diamondbacks World Series game in, in 2001, after which my dad said he'd rather watch the game on TV. In Seattle, before a Mariners game a couple of years ago, he, he bought my son's friend Dylan his first legal drink in a hotel, fancy hotel, uh, and then picked up a hefty tab bar when all the rest of us chimed in. Dylan brought cards to play uh, over deep dish pizza in Chicago because, as you probably know, Bear loved a good card game. We attended several rock and roll concerts together, mostly involving our favorite artists, Little Feet and the late Jerry Riopelle. Over the past several years, we met virtually once a month on the Little Feet radio show where he was an active participant. That gathering will be the lesser now for his absence. I want to leave you with a Jerry Riopelle lyric that Bear loved. I will dance like a fool, won't be afraid to laugh. I'll believe that everything matters and that everything lasts. I'll see love and dreams and never wake up. And I'll change every day and taste every drop. I'm so young. I want to remember my brother who tasted every drop and would give you the shirt off his back if you needed it. Back in the day when he was young and strong, to me that seems like it was only yesterday. Please enjoy this beautiful day and think of my unfailingly generous and kind brother, our bear. He'd certainly want it that way. Thank you for thinking of him. He'd want you to hoist a drink in his memory. Please do so as soon as possible. Thank you.